This is the best possible start to Once Human. I'm going to show you how to very quickly get geared, how to massively, massively skip most of the main story to unlock lots of recipes and just open up more of the map. You're going to be so far ahead of nearly everyone if you follow this on a fresh start server. And if you jump into an already progress server, you're going to catch up to the Sweat Lords very, very quickly within your first few hours. Let's get into it. Your server selection does not matter for this guide. This guide is made to tailor, uh, you know, season ends, you know, new servers, PvE, and the PvP all in one. It's very uh, wide in its scope. So, but for the sake of the video, I will be doing a PvP server that is only one day old. Again, if it's three or four days old, it does not matter. This guide will help you regardless of server age. So I'm going to pick a new server here. And uh, your character that you create, you can create whatever you want. But I'm going to tell you right now because you're going to be staring at the backside of your character more often than not. I do recommend that you make a female character. Now, there is one important thing when making your character, and that is the body tag. Let me hold on. Let me move this down here. So at the top, there is a body slider with a fitness slider. This is important. A lot of people don't realize this. So if you look in the bottom right corner, there's an icon that says your weight. Now, if you eat a lot of food in the game, you'll gain weight. And if you don't feed your character much, you're going to lose weight. And they have different stats. The stats that we care about most is melee damage and uh, everything else can just, it doesn't matter, right? So what we want to do is we want to make our character overweight. So grab the fitness slider and make them chubby. And what this does is they are now 96 kilograms, which puts us at a base load of 100 kilograms, so we can carry more stuff, but also our melee attacks deal 15% more damage. Attack speed does not matter because of how we're going to be using our melee attack. So again, make your character obese or overweight for this. Uh, and again, if you don't like the way it looks, just don't eat for a while. As soon as you gain control of your character, what you want to do is you want to loot everything you can. So make sure that you absolutely uh, grab everything in the starter zone. There's lots of high-level items here. Make sure you just run around and push that use button on every single thing that you can. And uh, grab every box, loot every enemy. Do not miss a single thing. Once you have the machete, it's time to learn how to properly melee. You're always going to be using the right click or the heavy attack. And you're almost always going to be doing running jumps towards the enemy. So this enemy here, we're going to run towards him. We're going to jump and then melee, and that's going to lock on. It's going to deal plenty of damage. We're going to loot him immediately, running to the next enemy, jumping and doing attacks. And then you're going to be jumping and doing attacks from behind, like so. And this is how you defeat almost every enemy without them being able to attack, even the large ones. So you jump, you swing, you jump again, you swing, you jump around. And you're just going to be jump strafing around them and swinging your heavy attack. And that's basically what you're going to do for every single enemy in the game except bosses. Whenever you get the rustic jacket after talking to whatever this lady's Mitsuko, uh, the game wants you to open your gear menu and then change uh, your top here to the rustic jacket. Do not do this. I'm going to tell you why. So by wearing three pieces of the test subject armor, you're wearing the top, the legs, and the mask. This gives you a three set bonus of 10% melee increased damage. Whereas um, all you get... Come on, tutorial. Uh, for the Rustic Hat set, or the Rustic set, you have movement speed, melee damage, and HP, but we don't need 20% gathering speed. It's so benign and pointless. You don't need to swap out your test subject top for it. So at this point, the game wants you to gather. So uh, all you need to do really in this zone is every time you see one of these Hawthorne bushes, always yoink them. Every time you see one of these red-looking... Uh, cattail looking things the scarlet calamus always yoink those as well we're going to be selling them we're not going to be using them early on so make feel free to run around the zone and grab all of those also there's some corn usually up here in the corner you can grab so feel free to grab that now when mining don't bother mining the stone only mine the copper for now to get your stone you do uh, need 50 gravel to pass the tutorial but you want to get that gravel by mining the copper and there's some corn right there don't mine any sulfur you won't need it we're going to be farming mobs for gunpowder anyway 
once you are at the part where you've crafted the crossbow and you need to come back to the little house here to trigger the fight scene, instead you're going to use this opportunity to go out and hunt some deer and get about six rawhide. Just shoot deer with your crossbow and get six rawhide. And whenever you need to return back, you'll easily find your way back because there'll be a nice yellow icon right there to find your way back. And of course, as you run around, make sure that you grab all the plants that you can along the way because we're going to be selling these for a small little early boost. That's pretty much it. But as long as you run forward, you're going to see some wildlife. You're going to see some deer. And uh, the more Hawthorn that you grab and the more Scarlet whatever that you grab, the, the easier. You can also use your Butterfly to hunt. So to do that, you just push E whenever you see the deer's health bar. And then, j then just swipe over to auto attack. And your Butterfly will fly out and murder the deer. Uh, but it's easier just to shoot them. You know, just two shots to the head or whatever and then they basically die. There we go, the Butterfly did it. And then skin them. And uh, we're going to be doing this for a little bit. You can you can do more than six rawhide, but it's just uh, it's just way easier to um, stop at six. You don't have to though if you don't want to. Another thing that I recommend is that you push I, open your inventory, and remove canned lunch meat, and boiled water, and sanity gummy, and flatbread uh, from your hot bar. Uh, the only thing I would leave is activator, which is basically a heal, and put that on whatever button is most comfortable for you. Also, while you're, while you're at it, go ahead and gather some wood. You don't need too much. I would say stop around, uh, you know, 500 is, 500 is good. Once you have enough wood, go ahead and come back inside and in the corner here, here's Mitsuko, and to our right is a stove. Feel free to cook all the roasted hawthorn, or make some juice. It doesn't really matter because we're just going to sell this stuff anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to roast all of it. They sell for the same amount. And uh, there we go. Now, if you're interested in an arrow dupe, this is a pretty good one. So during this fight, for whatever reason, and it won't let me skip it, but for whatever reason during this fight, there is a respawnable arrow crate. It's right here. It's right there. So this little weapons crate, every 30 to 40 seconds, you'll get 30 more arrows. Now, another cool thing about this fight is that you can't die. Your HP will not be reduced beyond a certain amount. You also can't lose durability on any of your stuff. Uh, these enemies will run into the house base and die. Uh, so that's always fun. You can not They will stop spawning eventually. So you can't infinitely farm them forever. I wish you could, but the devs thought of that. But this guy here, don't worry about weak points or using the butterfly. Just chop his legs off. It's a real basic easy fight, and don't worry if you get hurt or anything, it's totally fine. We're gonna be, be like bum-rushing a mob that lets us heal, and there we go, that's the fight. Super easy stuff. So before you exit this door into the main game, you can get an extra butterfly by withdrawing this one. And now for whatever reason, once you enter the main game, it'll give you another one. You'll have two butterflies. I haven't really found a use for this, it's just kind of fun and interesting to know. Also, once you do enter the world, just drop immediately down. Don't float around anywhere, just drop down immediately. And of course, hit your glider before hitting the ground so you don't go splat. And uh, there we go. Nice and safe landing. Easy. Now, as soon as you touch down, go ahead and set up a base as the game explains. Now, the coolest thing about this game is that you can immediately move your entire base without having to deconstruct it and mule it. You can just slap a base down. You can just, uh, and don't worry about if you're hungry or thirsty, it's totally fine. We'll get fed later on. We're, I mean, we got, you know, some extra calories to burn anyway, right? But go ahead and just push B, and, um, yeah, and then slap a territory down. Now, it'll, it'll let you know if you can place one down. Look, over here, I've got a blue icon, so that means I can totally slap one down. There we go, we got our territory. Then push escape and follow the instructions in the top left. And since the instructions are a little wordy, I'll just play along, okay? It wants us to open the uh, the tab menu. There we go. Swipe to cradle. There we go. Click memetics, the meme, you know? And then it wants us to learn... We're going to learn disassembly because it's going to want us to do that one. Smelting essentials. Learn that one. There we go. We're going to escape out, escape out. And uh, now we have to get, uh, gather more gravel, but instead we're just going to gather more copper ore. And I don't know why it makes us do this twice. Then run back to your little base here and uh, do as it says. You're going to push B to enter territory mode. And all the stuff you place down, you can move. Then once uh, your game looks like this, right click. 
Uh, make sure you click facilities here at the top and then production processing. We're going to slap down a furnace. You know, you don't have to be exact with it, but uh, you can do however you want. And then also slap down this disassembly bench. But you need the copper ore first. So I'm going to mash escape, go up to the furnace, push F. And we, we need charcoal. So all that wood we chopped earlier, let's make 99 charcoal. And this is just the start. Don't worry, it's only a minute and 40 seconds. Go chop more wood while you wait. Now, once that's done, you're only going to craft 10 copper ingots. Make sure down here at the bottom left that you loot the charcoal, then go to copper ingot and only craft 10. Don't craft any more than that because we want the ore later to combine to make bronze. So we only want 10 copper ingots right now. We're going to wait on that. And while you wait, you can always mine more because you're going to need more copper ore. And you can also chop trees, you can hunt animals, and just look at that little uh, yellow icon with like the hammer. Once that circle completes, that means it's done, uh, uh, you know, cooking, I guess. With the tin copper ingots, you can now plop down the disassembly bench. And I love this thing. I wish more games had this stuff. But uh, what you do is you go over here, and then when you have junk, I only had a jacket. You hit select all, and then you disassemble, and you'll get some uh, random junk items. You might have more, you might have less. It depends on how much that you've looted. So, again, we're just going to push J. Follow the instructions here. There we go. Go to the monolith runes and search for supplies. That's that yellow uh, icon here. So we're just going to run right over there. And you're just going to mash F and loot everything. Once you've looted the crates it wanted you to, then just, again, continue following the yellow diamond icons and uh yeah just continue following the quest markers now before you talk to mary you can run in here and do a little parkour puzzle see this purple glowing thingy here go ahead and just kind of touch also make sure you loot everything that you that's you know not bolted down then you'll see a purple floaty thing up there simply climb this little table then climb this locker fridge the scaffolding and then jump at the purple thing. There you go. Now you unlocked a little chest and it's got some stuff in it. And there's plenty of things all over the game hidden like this. But uh, that's just a little easy freebie for you. But again, just talk to Mary and advance the story. After you talk to Mary, open your map, find your home, hold F to teleport. There we go. Even though it's not that far away, it's totally fine. The game wants you to learn how to teleport, so you have to advance the quest anyway. And I don't know why I have a loading screen. And then there we go. Then you get to disassemble all the junk you found. So it, we've already learned how to do that. There we go. Disassemble everything. Next part of the quest is we're going to now unlock the supplies workbench. Which is right here under crafting. Then go to essential tools. And there we go. We got it. Oh, it wants us to also do ammo one. Okay. So we go again up here to crafting. And then here's ammunition one. Go ahead and click that. And then confirm. And while you have this open, you might as well unlock the gear workbench too, because you're going to need that very very soonish. Now at this point, you're going to need 30 more copper ingots, so go ahead and craft 30 more of these bad boys. Won't take that long. There we go. And then just mine and chop trees and harvest stuff while you wait for that two minutes. Also, while you're at it, go to your furnace and queue up 99 more charcoal. You should have plenty of wood if you've been chopping. Now that you have the ingots, you're going to go ahead and open your menu. You're going to put down the supplies workbench that you learned. There we go. And then put down a gear workbench. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's fine. And there we are. Then you've got to learn how to craft a gun. So we're going to go ahead and swipe over, hold tab, swipe to cradle, flip memetics. Up here at the top, click crafting, click basic gear, learn that one. There we go. You're also going to want to learn long-range firepower. You should be able to afford this around this point. If not, you can always just pick it up later. But for the quest, you will need to craft a pistol, submachine gun, or shotgun. I recommend that you just craft the pistol. That way, it's just it's cheap. Uh, we will need more copper ingots, though. Uh, so, again, just... Uh, let's see. We need two more ingots, it looks like. So, I'm going to go ahead and make two more ingots... Not a big deal. There we go. Craft those. It's only going to take 10 seconds. Uh, not a whole lot to do while I wait. But it's pretty simple. I'm going to show you how the crafting works because the menu can be a little bit confusing and a little bit weird. So we're going to go ahead and grab this copper ingots now. There we go. All right. So we go over here. We click the pistol. Make sure it's on tier one. You wouldn't be able to craft tier two anyway. Uh, at crafting materials, you have to click this plus symbol, then push F. Click this plus symbol, push F, and then this one and push F. Then hold F to confirm. 
And there we go, we got ourselves a pistol. We're not gonna be using it though because it doesn't really hit that hard. And now you have to craft ammo at the supplies workbench and this will cost more copper. So let's just craft some pistol ammo. We're gonna need three copper ingots and we already have the gunpowder which the game did supply to us. So again, we're just gonna craft three of these. And you may be thinking, why don't you tell us to craft more? Because you want as much ore as possible. You, you don't want to waste your ore because we're going to be making bronze very, very soon with it. And again, we, we, we don't want to make too many bars because then the we're going to farm bars. You're going to see. We're going to be farming ingots, rather. Uh, much, much, uh, very, very, very soon. Anyway, I'm just going to craft a copper pistol ammo. There we go. And uh, I'm going to wait three more seconds. Loot this. That will let us go to the next part of the quest. There we are. All right, go to Deadsville. Teleportation recommended. Well, uh, oh, we can teleport now, so just use your teleport. That's fine. It's literally across the street. Now, in the earlier versions of the game, you had to walk there, but again, it's totally fine. Just teleport or walk, whatever you want to do. It's, uh, and here we are. This is the first town. Now, what we're going to do before we do anything else, we're going to walk over to this guy on the east side. His name is Weber, and we're going to sell a bunch of stuff. We're going to dock, open the shop, Go to sell, go to consumables, and we're gonna sell we're gonna sell all the meat. There we go. Goodbye, meat. Uh that was crocodile meat. This is deer meat. Uh we're gonna sell all these scarlet calamuses, all of them. If you don't sell these, these have a durability, a duration. They will spoil. They're considered food. So in 24 hours, these go bad. We're, we're not gonna use them in 24 hours. I'd rather have this 530 energy, which is a currency. Uh the hawthorn berries, you know, you could cook these if you want. I'm just gonna sell. Uh, the corn, I'm going to, I'm going to sell for now, because we're just going to do that. Do not sell the canned lunch meat. This doesn't go bad. This lasts forever. Uh, the sanity gummy, we don't, we won't need these. We just don't need them. Uh, the deer milk, again, we're going to sell that. We're going to sell the roasted hawthorn here, and, uh, the flatbread. There we go. And, uh, we're not selling the activators. We're not selling the canned lunch meat. For tools, we're not going to sell our pickaxe or Molotov cocktail. Now that you're in the town, your hunger and thirst should slow down a tiny bit, but go ahead and push J and then go to Journey. And uh, here at Architect, you're just going to claim everything. So there we go. Claim all that stuff. That's going to level you up. Uh, go ahead and claim all that. Claim all this stuff. There we go. And uh, yes, just scroll down. If you have anything else to claim, make sure you claim it. And uh, there we go. We are now level four, I believe. While you're here, uh, you might or might not have to talk to this teleportation tower. It's already unlocked for me, but uh, again, uh, depending on the version you play, then talk to Mary, skip the dialogue, and uh, advance the story. So after talking to all the NPCs and exhausting their dialogue, you don't need to take up these, uh, these little side quests. There's no reason to do side quests in the starter zone. You'll get a motorcycle, your first yeah. mount. And uh, like if it disappears, just push G and then left click and you can pop it back out. Now, I want to tell you right now, you got to be early game. You need to be careful with this thing. Don't go joyriding because it does have fuel. And also, don't run into stuff with it or drive it off cliffs because it has durability. And you're not quite in the best of shape to be able to repair it just yet. So with your motorcycle, don't be like these guys who are walking towards the quest objective. Just ride there. It's much quicker if you ride there. And yes, I'm aware I took the wrong road. The world is pretty much open up to you now. If you want to do side quests, you can. You don't have to, though. I don't recommend that you do. The, I've, I've done many runs where I've done every side quest, and the rewards just aren't worth it. Uh, I would I would go uh, skip to the third tier, and that's when I would start doing side quests and also that view. Oh, man. Look at that. Um, but, <laughs> guys, I'm telling you. Uh, you, you, you don't need to put it down a campsite. There's no need for it. Uh, I think that's, no, that, that's, that's a cornfield. You can grab some corn if you want from that, that there on the left, but I'm just going to rush the objectives and get to the third tier as fast as possible. And I'm going to, uh, <laughs> teach you how to do that. So one very important thing to do for materials is always loot these, uh, oh, I forget what they're called. Um, but... The story will have you do it once you, you know, advance the story. We're going to talk to this little gooey statue thing. Wrong metastate, sure, whatever. And there we go. Now we can talk to this thing. And, oh, I got to fight the doppelganger. So to fight the doppelganger, uh, you can just chop its legs off. But when it chain guns, if you want to be real safe, just hide behind the truck. And when it chain guns, again, it won't hit you. Just dug down behind it. It's a real simple and easy fight. 
Now, I just face tanked it, so I lost a bunch of health, and that's totally fine. We're, we have plenty of heals, and we're going to be getting a healing deviant. Uh, but afterwards, again, use the rift anchor here. There we go. And, um, yeah, you get a bunch of loot from these things. You always want to pop these whenever you can, every opportunity that you get. But again, keep keep a uh, mental note of where you're at on the map here. Like this little area, this is these are cornfields. If you want to do fishing, you're going to have to harvest corn to make bait. Uh, but I don't really see the point in fishing early game, so I say skip it for now. You can always come back later when you're geared and do fishing then. But what you're going to do is you're just going to ride your motorcycle to each of these little rift thingies. And uh, again, just follow the quest markers. Just do what the game tells you. It's, uh, it's real simple and easy. And they're not too far. It may say like one kilometer. Well, that's really nothing. Also, pumpkin field. Uh, keep note of that if you want to do pumpkins for, you know, pumpkin stuff. Now, remember earlier when I told you don't take your motorcycle and jump it off cliffs? That's a really quick way to break your motorcycle. Instead, just push the spacebar while in the air and then use your glider, uh, the, the V-Bird, and uh, that's how you're going to traverse around. Don't forget. Also, I don't recommend driving the motorcycle through water. If it's starting to slip into water, re-summon it to stable ground. If this thing sinks, it can take very heavy durability damage. And repairing this thing this early sucks. Also, at some point, you're going to be fully thirsty and you won't be able to sprint anymore. So when you are fully thirsty, open your menu, go to your water bottle icon, and chug some of that boiled water you looted in the starter zone. Th this is basically an infinite resource, so feel free to just top your meter off entirely it's totally fine and uh there we go so we are all full up on water and uh we're continuing along the quest objective once i've crossed the river i can always just resummon the motorbike get back on and uh, that's how you travel optimally once you've uh got the quest to craft any type of ammo go ahead and just teleport back to your home and uh, it should be free and then just craft 100 pistol ammo Actually, instead, craft, uh, craft SR ammo. Copper SR ammo. Now, it's three ingots each and nine gunpowder. I'm sorry, it's one gunpowder. I have nine currently. Also, if you haven't done so, you can put a butterfly in this isolated securement unit that your base comes with. And then, uh, you know, sync it up. That way you have your butterfly summon. Now, for the armor crafting quest, just craft a hat. Again, cl click the plus symbol down here. Push F. And there we go, go ahead and craft that. And then when it crafts, just feel free to equip now. It'll It's slightly better than what you're wearing. And there we go, meet Mary under the monolith of greed. We should be very close to that. It is just up the road. So after talking to Mary, you get 10 heals and a bunch of ammo. And uh, what we're going to do now is this area we're about to head into, the enemies drop gunpowder, which to make gunpowder, you need acid, which is a mob drop. You need sulfur, which is mineable. And you need a third ingredient, I think charcoal, which is refinable. But because these mobs just drop gunpowder already made, it's a really good farm spot for gunpowder. They also drop copper ingots. Not ore, but ingots. So you want to kind of dismount here at the gate and uh, just pull out your melee weapon and kill everything and loot everything you see. So you can see here I killed this guy. I got a gunpowder and two copper ingots. That is freaking amazing. And there's lots and lots of stuff around to loot. And so you want to clean out everything in all of these buildings. It's lots of good stuff. Uh, but again, the mob farming is where it's at. So feel free to just kill and everything. You should one-shot it with uh, with your, your weapon. You have plenty of heals. You'll be absolutely fine. And the boss fight is super duper easy. Again, just spam your Q. Look for lootable crates kill everything you see they're gonna respawn feel free to farm here for a little while if you want also there's a mob hitting me uh, while I'm looting but that's okay and again just grab everything now I want to mention that uh oh come on don't blow up this barrel please okay so over here in the west corner there's like some spooky rocks all the notes on the ground are gonna tell you to use c4 or grenades don't do that just grab an explody barrel and huck it at the wall there you go and then behind it or inside of it, there's like a little chest. That's how you get the chest. Don't waste grenades. Don't waste C4 on two antibiotics. That would be so dumb. So once you you make your way inside the main building where the quest uh, tells you to go to, uh, there's going to be some benches here. Uh, well, the quest will tell you. And uh, you can go ahead. And if you want, you can craft a sniper rifle, but you don't really need to. You could just face tank it.
So at this point in the game, you have basic tier 1 unupgraded equipment. Uh, you are probably starving. You don't need to feed yourself. Remember, we put on some pounds before we started the game, which we'll slim down to. It's totally fine. You might have more or less sanity. That's that blue meter on your health bar at the bottom middle. Uh, if you have, like, say, health, half of your health bar is blue, that's totally fine. This boss is still completely doable. I'm going to use the rift beacon here. I'm going to enter it. And then I'm going to push Y to ready up. I'm not doing this with a party. You don't need a party. Uh, I make guides for solo players. My whole video is based around solo play. And uh, this boss is relatively simple. You don't need a gun. You can just run up and chop its legs. But uh, all you have to do is while it shoots at you, you just take cover if you're even worried. There's really not a lot to be worried about. So it's going to point its gun. You just take cover while it shoots. There we go. And then when it stops shooting, you can run up and chop it. And there we go. We jump. We chop. It's going to teleport around. It's going to try to shoot us. We just strafe by. And yeah, we're taking we're taking hits. We're taking damage. That's totally fine. But anyway, you're going to continuously chop. And yes, it did hit me. Just pop a heal. It's fine. And it, again, you can shoot this with your crossbow or a gun if you want. If you feel like this is too hard or you're taking too much damage. But it's really much faster just to freaking <laughs> chop the damn boss down. You deal way more damage with your melee. Of course, you don't want to charge him while he's shooting, if you can help it. We're going to save those explody barrels for a bit. There we go. Just chop, chop. And again, I'm about to have to pop another heal. Once we fi fight this boss, we never need our healing items ever again. There we go. We actually climbed up his gun and slashed him in the face. Alright. But yeah, this boss is super duper simple. And... Might be quicker to actually shoot him, but whatever, it's fine. There we go. We blew his gun arm off. We're going to use that, and we're just going to blast him in the face now. Right in his gooey, yellow, nasty-looking face. So when it says immune, drop the weapon, pop a heal, and there's going to be two little spawn points in this corner and on that corner. I'll show you. Just wait for it. Wait for him to spawn. Takes a minute. There it is. And then we're just going to... Well, I'm not going to crossbow it. I'm just going to... Hello? Melee weapon? It keeps swapping to my crossbow. I don't know why. There we go. And then we're just going to chop this down. Now, you may be wanting to kill the adds. You don't need to kill the adds. Just kill the spawner. The adds will disappear. So your auto attack, your your auto lock on will totally uh, target the adds. Now, what you can also do is grab these explodey barrels and then throw them at the boss. There we go. That's a nice little explosion there. Now, these are kind of limited, though, but, uh, you know, there are around, so you just do it in between his shots. Let's go ahead and grab another barrel. There we go. Now, you don't want to, like, you don't want him to be spraying at you when you have these barrels out, because he'll shoot the barrel and blow you up instead. You can see here, if you wanted to play, you know, safe with the crossbow, you just shoot him in the head, 361 damage. It's a I feel like it's not as action-packed this way, but it's totally viable. And also, that chain gun that we blew uh, on the ground earlier is still there for us to use. But we can go ahead and pelt him if we want. And uh, you can combat roll if you want. I'm just going to pop another heal. Here, let's go ahead and grab this. Again, it's a really easy fight. And we just blew another chain gun on the ground where he's standing currently. There we go. That ran out of bullets, so we can run up grab this one now. And again, just full auto into his dome. There we go. He's immune. Drop it back down. Swap to our melee. I, I kind of want to make this shorter so that I'm not making too long of a vid. But again, spawn points in the same spots. Pretty simple stuff. Eliminate the spawners. We got this. And yeah, he's doing a little charged attack there. It does hurt a little bit. But again, we could face tank it. It's fine. This is not heroic or like, you know, super high difficulty or anything of the sort. And again, you have to fight the auto-targeting just a little bit. But there we go. We got it chopped down. Go ahead and grab this. He's going to teleport back into the stage here. We got to wait. There he is. And he's teleporting around. Shoot him in his face. And his health is just draining down. Now he's going to shoot some explosions. Which, uh, yeah, that does hurt. I wouldn't face tank that. But hey, we got those heals. It's fine. Now he's over there. I don't know why I'm swinging up the air. Again, you can just take cover. It's fine. Very, very easy boss fight. Let's finish him with a crossbow, because why not? 
Again, with a pistol, probably be a little easier. Just take cover. He, like, he has no answers against cover. So. There we go. Last shot. Now he's dead. So at this point, you're going to get a choice. And let's go ahead and just grab this festering gel. This is what's going to be our heal buddy. Uh, he's a little happy little slime. Now, here you have a treasure chest and you have a choice. What you're going to do is you're going to hold G. You're not going to use your control. You're, you're not going to use your controller for max gain. You're going to just do your minimum gain. You want to save those controllers for higher tier zones. Trust me on this. Then go ahead and just claim everything. And uh, there you go. That's basically the fight. We got some loot here from mobs. You can go ahead and pick those up. Or arrows, I guess, that we pelted into the boss. And that's the first boss. Super duper easy. Then after the boss fight, just follow your quest markers. You'll end up talking back to Mitsuko again. Skip to the dialogue. After the dialogue and cutscenes, it's going to have us unlock bronze crafting. Yay! So we got a memetics. Uh, we're going to uh, then learn the copper pickaxe, which uh, we're just going to basically skip. Then bronze crafting, learn that. And then we're going to learn the bronze pickaxe, learn that. Learn forging techniques. And then we're going to learn steel pickaxe. That's right, we're going straight to steel. It's going to be awesome. Uh, next up, uh, once it lets me click over here, then we're going to click on uh, building. We're going to then learn garage and learn that. Now, at the point where the game wants you to journey back to your personal territory, instead, you're going to go north. And uh, so here is the monolith agreed where we were at, where we fought the boss. You're going to go north and west. You're going to set a waypoint for this Rift Anchor Refinery. And after you've crossed over, you're going to be able to see this teleportation tower. And what you're going to do is you're going to spend some time doing a little bit of mining and crafting in this little area here. So we're going to go ahead and grab this teleportation tower. There we go. Doink that. And then you'll notice that this, this little brown node is iron. And we're, we also have tin. And so what you're going to do is you're going to just kind of go down here. And there might be a bunch of houses if, it, if, if it's a, um, like a, a more advanced server. But because no one's here yet because it's day one, uh, there's plenty of spots to build. Otherwise, just find a nice spot to build. Push B. Push the Z button and you could copy paste your territory and move it. You can do that every 10 minutes, by the way. There we go. And so there we go. Our territory is now back. And then I'm going to use this facility. I'm going to put the festering gel inside. And then I'm going to use the sink to cradle. So now anytime you need to heal, once this guy is charged up, you just hold E, uh, select build fortification. And uh, I got to wait until he's uh, got more deviant power. But it'll set down like a little cover wall that's made of blob or goo. And it heals you and your sanity. It's so freaking stupidly powerful. But uh, again, I just got to wait for his deviant power to go up. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to let you figure this one out on your own a little bit. But you're going to go to your supplies workbench and then you're going to craft a copper pickaxe. You should have plenty of ingots and we farmed the raw hide earlier. So go ahead and craft one of those bad boys. You're going to use that copper pickaxe and you're going to farm tin. Remember, tin is the silver nodes that are around here, the silvery looking nodes, and they're all over the place. Then you're going to craft a bronze and make a bronze pickaxe and use the bronze to get iron. And then you're going to make a steel pickaxe by using the iron ore and charcoal. So work on that for a while. You should know how to do this. And to make sure you're using the right tool, once it's crafted and looted, you go to the little tool icon here. It looks like a wrench. On it's very left side. Uh, you, you grab the pickaxe that you want. You drag it on your hot bar. You take the pickaxe you don't want and you just discard it. There you go. And uh, you're going to rinse and repeat until you're at steel. At some point while you're mining, you might get a Digby boy. So if you go to the facility here, you could put a Digby boy. Let's withdraw the blob for now. And uh, you could put a Digby boy inside. But what I recommend that you do, if you want to do this, I don't think they're all that useful. I think Digby boys are a waste of time. But if you want, you can go to, um, I think it's uh, Function Facility. Yeah, under Function Facility, under Facilities, you can build an isolated securement unit. And you'll need to make gr glass, which is something you make in the furnace. And you can put multiple of these isolated securement units down. And you'll get multiple Digby boys. And you can have like five or six little robot boys running around mining for you automatically. But they don't mine very much at level one. Uh, but I haven't played around with them too much. I don't really think they're worth the effort. But if you want to do it, you can. 
Now, while you wait for things to smelt, it might be a good idea to grab some of this river water and boil it at a camp. So I'm just going to grab some water here. And you don't want to grab too much because if you carry way too much dirty water, it's going to really overload your carry capacity. So I would just stop at around 90 to 100 or so. Go ahead and plop down a camp. And uh, because we're not, we, we didn't learn the stove function. And then just boil, have this thing boiling some water. So we're just going to uh, boil the water. Craft 30 of those. There we go. All right, simple. Now, at this point, we can't exactly craft the steel pickaxe because we need to upgrade this bench. But we're going to be going into the phase two zone and getting all the materials. And so we'll be able to do it as soon as possible. It's just way better to get the iron now because in the phase two or the tier two zone, there is no iron. So it's just better to get it now than later. So the quest wants us to go back to the main town of Deadsville, and we're just going to teleport there. We're going to talk to all the NPCs, and that's going to usher us into the Tier 2 zone. Also, while in town, make sure that you talk to Weber and sell all of your consumables that you won't be using. Like, I got all these apples from a tree, and, uh, you know, I actually do like apples for food because it's food and energy, and they're pretty easy to get. They only last four hours, but uh, don't sell your canned lunch meat. Uh, but you can sell basically everything else. I wouldn't sell your activators either. So once you get the quest to head to the Myers Market, instead you're going to take a longer route by going over here to this Rift Anchor High Banks, and you're going to activate that. Then on the way you're going to get this Rift Anchor activated, stop by the town, and then finally activate this third Rift Anchor. This will save you time later in questing. Now, once you get to the town, you're going to get the Murmurs in the Forest quest to investigate a hideout. Don't don't go there yet. Instead, go to this third Rift Anchor and activate it before you do anything else. And I forgot it's not three anymore, it's four. So after grabbing this one that is southeast of the town, go ahead and travel west and get that fourth one. Afterwards, the easiest way to get to the quest is to just teleport to wherever your house is, it does not matter where your house is. You can even just build your house and or move your house and plop it down. Because when you're on your house plot, you can teleport off of it. So we're going to teleport to this tower here. Um, and then we're going to go to the quest marker. So that is the quickest way to get there. So once you followed the quest marker to Secrets in the Woods. And man, that's actually spooky. That guy that came out of that little doorway there. Let me kill him real quick. Um, <laughs> I had, that jumped me by surprise. I'm, I'm, I've been up too late. Anyway, open your map. And right next to the quest marker, there's like a little thing called Securement Silo Sigma. You're going to make a little path marker to that and then go right in front of this building. And it looks like I'm one of the first ones here on the server, which is really nice. But uh, if, you're, if you're playing a more populated or a more um, developed server, this is going to be flooded with houses. Uh, so this is a little dungeon area that people tend to farm. Uh, it's also a nice house location. But what you're going to do is you're just going to plop your plot down somewhere nearby for now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to craft a baseball bat at the gear workbench. So we're going to go to craft weapon. We're going to go to melee. We're going to go to the baseball bat. Tier 2. And you should have the rubber and the other the items required. If not, go to your disassembler. And then everything that you've been looting, just select all, disassemble. That should give you plenty of stuff uh, from the quest that we've been doing. I haven't done any side missions at all. But you're going to go ahead and craft yourself this tier 2 baseball bat. Hold to confirm. There we go. We have the bat. Then you're going to equip the bat in your melee slot. No more machete. So go ahead and slap. Level not high enough. Really? I have to be level 10. I am level 9 right now. I am literally level 9. I am ahead of myself. Well, we can, uh, <laughs> we can mine for a little bit. Now, we this area is very rich in tin, and we have a bronze pickaxe. And so just mine and craft a lot of bronze ingots. You're going to want a whole lot of bronze ingots. Also, go to your uh, push J, go to your journey tab, and then claim as much stuff as you can and uh, try to get to level 10. For, uh, this is the first time I haven't hit level 10 on this run, so... Pretty interesting stuff, but, you know, lots of little XP's here and there. We should be able to hit it relatively soonish. Well, you're going to have to do the dungeon the slow way until we hit level 10, and then it's going to become one-shottable. So go ahead and enter Securement Silo Sigma. You can still do this without any upgrades. 
and it's going to give us a big boost of XP to get us to push us to 10 anyway. We want to get this done and out of the way before we do the next quest, because the next quest is a pseudo fake boss fight, which it's pretty grindy if you don't uh, have strong weapons. So in the dungeon, just uh, just melee everything down and loot everything that you can. And uh, yeah, you're not going to one shot these guys. But they still go down pretty easy, and if you get wounded... Okay, well, I guess those guys are going down in one hit. But the bosses won't. But as you get wounded, because they will be using guns against you, uh, just drop your little uh, your little slime dude and uh, heal up. And again, you want to make sure that you're looting every single thing in these rooms. And you don't have to kill these if you don't want to. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you're pushing Q and you're just looting all the junk and all the chests. Even the hidden rooms, you have to clear every single thing because you want all of those resources. So I'm about halfway dead. I'm going to drop my little slime wall here. And you can see that it just tops me right up. It's so broken and overpowered. And then I unsummon it whenever I'm topped off. That way, uh, you know, it's recharging its energy and it'll be ready again uh, whenever I need more heals. But yeah, these guys are one-shottable. So we didn't even need to upgrade. I just like killing the boss faster because the, the boss is kind of a damage sponge in this dungeon but you know clearing this a few times should push us to level 10. Now if you happen to do the bonus little wish toy section of this dungeon and you manage to beat it it is a very tough fight when we're under geared but it is doable because I just did it. Uh, you do get the uh, the long axe however this thing you can't upgrade this because you don't technically own it the only things that you technically own in this game are things that you craft. That's why we're going to be souping up this baseball bat. Uh, whereas the axe would be better if we had the blueprint for it, but it's too early to get the blueprint. So once you get to the boss, it's just the guy with the chain gun. It's really simple. He doesn't hit too hard, and we do have basically infinite heals. Uh, so kill the adds, uh, then wail on the chain gun guy. He's going to summon adds which uh, just kill the adds when, once he summons them. And there's still lots of stuff to loot in this room too. Like there is, uh, there's like a whole bunch of med kits on the walls. You can also, again, throw barrels, but he is, you know, spamming a gun at you. So uh, with the baseball bat souped up, you can like kill this dude in like four or five hits. But you can see here, we're still chunking him pretty hard. And even though we're just face taking his machine gun, we can just throw our heal down. There we go. And uh, as long as I'm standing near that heal, we're fine. And it's an easy boss fight. Super easy. There we go. We took him down. We even blew up at the end there. Let's unsummon our blob. And quickly loot the room. We have f almost five whole minutes to loot this last room here until the dungeon closes. Uh, which I've already looted everything else. There we go. And again, you want to grab everything in this room. Now, if you choose to rerun the dungeon, you can't loot all the crates again. You can loot the enemies, though, and you can grind the enemies for XP, but just clearing this dungeon once, I was, like, level 9.5, and, and now I'm level 10.5. So, again, it, it only took, uh, like, 3 or 4 minutes to clear. Uh, and then, again, for this uh, dungeon, we don't want to use control. We want to use the minimum gain. So that's what I'm going to do. There we go. And that's just energy link and stardust. So there we go. And now that we're level 10, we can not only cr uh, wear that bat that we crafted, uh, we can then soup it up all the way, which is really, re it's going to one shot so many things. It's its really interesting how the bat works. Oh, and I forgot to mention, talk to this TV head guy and he's got like quests and stuff. So just, just exhaust all his dialogue and you'll be, you'll be fine. So just one dungeon run with looting all the chests. I disassembled everything before the dungeon and now after the dungeon. You can see that I'm about to get a whole crap ton of material here. And now that we're level 10, that bat we crafted, we can now equip, which is really nice. By the way, if you want to know if something is crafted by you or owned, when you highlight it, like for instance this axe, it's going to have like a person's head here and some characters I can't read. This means that you don't own this, that uh, you can't repair this when it's broken. Uh, you, you can loot it again and again, but like, uh, again, this thing is as strong as it's going to get. So we want to definitely soup up the baseball bat. And one of the reasons why is blunt damage. This deals damage based on the enemy's current HP. It says once, but it, it works on every hit for whatever reason. So it, it's, it's just a huge damage modifier. But at the same time, we also want sniper rifles. And so to do that, we're going to open the cradle by holding tab, uh, mousing over to the right, go to memetics, and then go up here at the top to crafting. 
Then we're going to learn long range firepower. Go ahead and uh, learn that bad boy. There it is. All right, so that uh, unlocks the sniper rifle. And so the first thing, though, that we're going to do... Well, we already crafted the bat, so now we're going to craft the sniper rifle. So go ahead and uh, we're going to craft the tier 2 sniper rifle. And you should have the ingredients, so there we go. And uh, if you don't, just make more of those bronze ingots. But you should have everything else. All right. And that's going to cost you 500 of that energy, but if you need more energy, we can just run that dungeon for 390. And once we soup up these weapons, you one-shot everything. You, you, like, four-shot the boss. It's like a two- or three-minute run. It's super quick. And there we go. Now we have a sniper rifle that is uh, level 10, 251 gear score, I guess. And we're going to soup this bad boy up also. So to upgrade these weapons, you're going to then click Calibrate on the, on the gear workbench, or you can click it here at the top. Find the bat, and this is going to cost 7 bronze ingots and 84 of that energy, so that's level 1 out of 4. There we go, then do it again, that's level 2 out of 4. This time it's going to start co costing stardust sources, level 3 out of 4, and then finally 4 out of 4. There we go. So now we have a very powerful melee weapon, and then we're going to do the same thing for the sniper rifle, and uh, this one also costs bronze ingots and energy links, so that's 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now we have a level 4 sniper rifle. Very, very good. Now in your gear menu, which is the K button, once you have equipped the sniper rifle, right-click it to modify, then click this little mods box, and, oh, we don't have anything yet. But when we find something, we're going to add it there. I'm also going to be checking the bat. Uh, so again, I'm going to go to the bat, click modify, click the mods, and we do have a melee modifier we can go ahead and equip. Let's equip that. There we go. And we can see now that we have the mod on the bat. So, And then we're going to go to our armor. And um, you can mod out your armor if you want. Uh, okay, tutorial, I don't care. I uh, know. Game, let me do my thing. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you can check mods. Like, we have some random mods here that you can just add to your armors if you want. You don't really need to. But, uh, you know, my I don't want to enhance it. I just want to equip it. There we go. Anyway, just add mods to your armor if you feel like it. You don't need it, though. Also, another power boost is you're going to hold tab, uh, mouse over to cradle, and then click cradle on the right this time. And then you're going to go ahead and equip the melee enhancement in the first upper top middle slot. And then uh, if you want, and come on, tutorial, get out of my, get out of my face tutorial. And then I also like the long range enhancement. I'm going to drag that onto this circle right here. And we're going to unlock this one very, very soon as well. Now, I recommend that you have around 200 to 250 uh, sniper rounds. I wouldn't get too crazy with the copper ammo because we can craft steel ammo very soon, which is just a damage boost. And now that you're all souped up and way overgeared, it's time to go finish the Secrets in the Woods quest. Just follow the quest markers. It's a very simple quest. So this boss fight here is basically a practice boss fight and uh, you can chip away at its health die and its health will never reset but the easiest way to defeat it and you can't really tell because it's kind of invisible but its weak point is kind of in the above its head on its back there there's technically a lady kind of right where I'm shooting and uh, you just shoot that weak point on the back and that's where all the damage comes from. Uh, as far as the, the boss fight mechanics goes, uh, we're about to fight this thing for reals. And uh, there, there's a laser that will really chunk your HP. Not a big deal because we have our, you know, trusty blob here. But uh, what you're supposed to do is hit these little cyst seeds, which will make a protective bubble that will allow you to not take damage. Also, if you're on the ground floor with it, uh, then it will do this thing where it slams the ground. And uh, you're supposed to jump to avoid the shockwave. It's a pretty simple fight, and uh, it's even easier when we fight it for real because of the uh, the arena that we're fighting this thing in is really unfair for it. We can dodge its laser, we never have to worry about the ground shockwave, and uh, we can see the weak point clear as day when it's not just a shadowy figure. You'll see here pretty soon. Now after the mock boss fight, if you did what I told you earlier and activated these rift anchors, you need at least four of them activated. This will then allow you to go to the next part of the quest, which is to actually beat the tree boss. And yes, we're already at the tree boss. We literally just started playing an hour ago. And yeah, we're advancing really, really quickly. I'm, I'm not joking. 
So, uh, just go straight there. We are more than well armed enough to kill this thing super easy. Now, at this point, if you've been reckless with your motorcycle or you've joy rode around, then you might have to repair or gas it up. And gassing it up is pretty easy. You just go to your motorcycle once it's summoned, and then you just push G to refuel it, and you will you should have some mixed fuel from quest rewards. And uh, all you do is click the fuel, and then click how much you want to add. It's really, really simple. Now, to repair it, you have to have your garage, and your starter plot isn't big enough for that. So push B, right-click, go to structures, go to frame, build, you know, a, a couple wood foundations. There we go. Then go to facilities, click production processing, and then scroll down to garage and uh, slap down a garage. You know, should just take just the two foundations, kind of like that. And there we go, slap that bad boy down. Then on the garage, you simply use the computer here, manage vehicles, and uh, then push G to repair it. That's going to cost some copper ingots and metal scraps, hold to confirm. And that's how you repair the, the motorcycle. All right, now I'm going to show you from start to end the Trent boss fight. It's super easy. Uh, here I am. I am at the quest objective, which uh, it trailed off the screen there. The Murmurs in the Forest quest. Recommended level 14. We're only 11. So, again, we're a little underleveled, but it's totally fine. Recommended players, too. Don't need them. We're doing this solo. And, it, again, this boss is easy and it's super fast. So, I'm just going to show you the entire fight. It's really, really simple, right? And so, as soon as we zone in, we're going to ignore the enemies and then jump out of the sewers, or whatever this is, into the tunnel here. It'll play a cutscene, which we will then skip. The first thing we're going to do is go to the right side here and clear that tentacle. Which, um, it kind of reminds me of the New World tentacles, if anyone's ever played New World. But we're going to jump up here, and we have a very powerful baseball bat. I'm just going to smack its weak point there. <laughs> 1,880. You got to make sure you hit those weak points. Which, uh, there we go. Enemy down. Now, uh, there's a few adds here, and these adds will cause trouble later, so we want to go ahead and just kill them now. There we go. Now, there's some flying adds as well, which, um, might or might not have spawned. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Second tentacle is right up here. Which, there's the flying mobs. We want to kill these immediately. So we're just gonna use our sniper rifle. There we go. And bop them. Also, the enemy... Yeah, we're getting ganged on a bit here. It's fine. Also, I didn't... <laughs> I don't know why I floated up like that. I don't know why they added a struggle mechanic when we're just so overpowered. Like, I do regular swings and they die in one hit, right? It's it, it's like, we are way too strong uh, for this encounter. Alright, so let's get this second tentacle. Again, you can use regular hits if you want, but if, if you aren't hitting the weak point, you're not dealing proper damage. And if we take damage, it's fine, right? There we go. Tentacle down. Alright, and then on to the third. And I'm just going to drop down kill the adds here. We don't want any adds alive for the boss fight at all. And uh, there we go. Go ahead and jump up here now. Make sure there's no adds up here. And we're just going to smack the tentacle. There we go. All right, tentacle down. We're going to pull up the sniper rifle, give it a quick reload. And we're just going to start shooting into the back here. Right in the back. Now, it's going to turn and face us. And what we're going to do on this platform, we're on the southern platform, we're going to use this rock as cover. And uh, that's really all we need. So, as you can see here, there is like a lady or something that is, you know, at the top. And that's the, that's the weak point. That's the target. And she's going to summon these little bubbles. Now, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to shoot the bubbles, right? But we can just tank them. We can just avoid them. So, she's lasering. And we're just going to dive behind the rock here. There we go. And if we just strafe left and right, we can we can dodge most of these exploding bubbles. And if not, it's fine. They don't really hurt that much. And if you are getting hurt, you have a heal. So again, we can you can see here that I'm doing tremendous damage. I don't even need to get behind that rock, really. Uh, <laughs> so we t we're tanking the bubbles, no problem. Let's summon our little our little slime wall. And you can see here that we have like two like a minute and twenty seconds to DPS her down. She's already nearly dead, right? This is why we went through the trouble of upgrading our weapons as we did. All right, a couple more shots. And there we go. That's the boss fight. It's the easiest fight ever in the game. But so many, I've watched so many streamers and so many YouTubers struggle like hell with this fight. It is so simple. Now, the reason we went sniper and no other weapon, I'm going to tell you right now, the meta is the sniper rifle and melee. The reason why it's the meta is because the sniper rifle does the most uh, weak spot damage than any other weapon. It's also the most am ammo efficient. 
Remember, when looting the chest, we're going to eliminate the minimum gain. Do not use your controls. Save those for higher tier zones. And there we go. So that's the dungeon. It's super simple, super easy. We can now leave the dungeon. And uh, look at that. Like, that is a record pace on taking that boss fight out. It's that simple. It's that easy. Then all you have to do after you fight the boss is follow the quest markers. And then you get to go to that tier 3 zone, which we've already been to. And we have the teleport already unlocked for it. So all you have to do is teleport to your, your hideout, your little, you know, your, your little home base that you built. And then from there, teleport up north to the tier 3 zone. It's that simple. Once you've turned in all the quests, it's time to head to the tier 3 zone. And to do that, because we're at, well, the, the Myers town here, we can just run in. There's the teleport. We can go ahead and touch the teleport tower. Scroll all the way up to this teleport tower that we unlocked earlier. And hey, there's our camp that we still have. So we can teleport right to here. And there we go. It's super cheap. We got plenty of resources. And uh, then you can continue on. And if you've been following the video up to this point, then you know exactly what you have to do. You follow your quest marker. Uh, what you're going to do when you're in these zones, you go to the main towns. You're going to be... Uh, hold on, let me scroll in a bit more. You're going to be activating these rift anchors for crafting materials. If you need more crafting materials, you go to these little, like, bases. There's, um, you know, there's another plant there. You can clear out these houses. You can do little mini quests if you want. And all of those are going to disassemble into materials. And then because you're in the tier 3 zone, you'll have tier 3 materials, which is steel. And you'll be able to craft tier 3 weapons and upgrade them if you want. But right now, I'm going to tell you right now, going into this zone with your bat and your sniper rifle, you one-shot everything. You literally one-shot everything. So, you can push tier 3 and upgrade it if you want. Uh, it's totally up to you. Or at this point, you can, you know, clan up. You can go do PvP stuff. You can do side quests. You can look for these red icons here and start doing these things. Uh, like, this the dark side. Uh, like, I can teleport to this right now. It's some sort of world event. It's recommended level 18. Well, I'm I'm stronger than any level 18 on the server right now, I can tell you that. There's probably no one even doing this because this is a brand new server and they're all still in the noob zones, dicking around, doing little mini quests. I'm going to tell you right now a few other uh, little advices, okay? So I did a few runs because I, I did so many practice runs before making this video. And uh, if you upgrade all of your armor to tier 2 and max them out... It does take a little while because you got to grind the materials, but if you do, you only have about 100 more max HP at this level and a little bit more pollution resist, and I don't really notice a difference. I honestly don't notice a single difference, so just avoid upgrading your armor for now. Just push the tier 3 zones. You one-shot everything. You have a heal buddy. You have everything you need, and um, a few other tidbits before we wrap up the video here. Now, if you're wondering how long it takes to get here, uh, I started filming this video two and a half hours ago, and I took three medium-length breaks, and I also am literally telling you exactly everything to do. So, if you take the length of this video, and then three breaks, like 15 to 20 minutes worth of time, that's how fast you can get to the Tier 3 zone. That is how fast you can advance in, in this game. And, and right now, this game's new. No one knows what the hell they're supposed to do. Everyone's off. Like, a lot of people that play these games, they just do every single quest because they feel like they're going to miss out if they don't. But the way the game is designed is that the, the quests in the Tier 1 zone give you Tier 1 materials. Well, you don't need those materials in when you're Tier 3, right? And so on and so forth. But you can't push too fast because the game does time gate you on how much you can progress depending on the total lifespan of the server. Because this server opened today, I can pal around in the Tier 3 zones, but the other Tier 4 zones and etc. won't open up for a few days, which gives you plenty of time to go back and do all the fun stuff if you want to do it, or if you're like a collectibles guy. But just remember, every six weeks, there's a full wipe. So, in six weeks from now, you know, come back to this video if you forget what to do or how to do it or where to go or how to do it. And uh, this video will always be here to help you out. So, yeah, very cool stuff. Now, another neat tip is you can go to Google and you can type once human interactive map. There you go. 
and uh, and then you know just click whatever the top result is. I don't know which one's the best, but this will help you find materials if you wanted to craft like blueberry stuff, I guess, or you know wheat stuff or corn stuff, whatever it is that you, kind of stuff you want to craft. You know, you can also uh, open up your your blueprint section here. Hold on, I just hit the wrong hotkey. But you can open up your your blueprint section, and let's say you wanted to have a really cool deagle, right? I think this is a desert eagle. Uh, like, whatever, DE50. I assume it's Desert Eagle. Well, you can see that the only way to get this blueprint is from the Wish Machine. Alright. Uh, what about this one? This is from the Wish Machine. What about the revolvers? Okay, well, this one comes from the Mystical Treasures Exploring the Dayton Wetlands. So this is in the Tier 1 zone, if you want this one. And you can see here that it has a Fast Gunner perk, whatever that means. If you want to have, like, some sort of quick draw weapon, I guess. Let's look at some snipers, huh? Well, how do I unlock this sniper? Wish machine. Okay, fine. Wish machine. Mystical treasures exploring the Chalk Peak. Well, that's, you know, a little far away from us. How about this one? Wish machine. Broken Delta. That's the tier 2 zone. So this sniper rifle uh, that gives you a, a burn status element when you shoot isn't somewhere in the tier 2 zone. You can go find that out. You can see here that the weak spot damage is a little less than the one that we have, and because I'm only using this to kill bosses, I kind of want as much weak spot damage as possible. And I, I I played around with a few burn weapons in the betas, and uh, they have static damage, and they suck. They all suck. I didn't find a single good burn weapon. But uh, again, armor blueprints, you can, you can look around. Like, I found the helmet for this one earlier. Um, because it's, uh, I already found it, it's not gonna tell me where to find it. It was somewhere in the tier 2 zone, obviously. Uh, but you can see here, let's look at this helmet, this cool helmet. Well, this is from Chalk Peak, alright. This is from Iron River. Hey, that's where we're headed. So, if we want, uh, the bullet saver effect, there we go. You can just do all the quests, look around, use that interactive map, you'll find it easy peasy, no problem. Now, if you're wanting other, um, you know, deviant upgrades, let's say you want to use heal consumables instead of a, a little healing little blob here. I love this thing. It cures sanity. It's so, so powerful. But if you want to use other ones, then you can always look uh, online at that, especially at that, you know, website that shows you the interactive map. Uh, but also, depending on the season, there might be some. Like, for instance, this one, this season, if I go to season goals and season rewards... Well, if I go to Battlefield, or Challenges, rather, yeah, if I go to Challenges, and I kill 200 enemies with melee weapons, you get this cool little Samurai Xeno Purifier melee summon. And it gives you the ability to blink instantly to enemies and melee them. It's, it's pretty fun. I don't like it as much as the Healing Blob. Uh, I think that if you just stick to the main story quest, you get plenty of good stuff. Um, as far as, like, PvP meta stuff goes, if you're not in a, in a clan, and you're not in a Zerg clan then you're just dead anyway. It's basically Rust. Uh, you're not gonna, like, make any solo players. You're not gonna, like, door camp someone and Eoka their face and get an AK. That's not really how it works. And here's the thing, too. When you kill players, you do get their stuff, right? But you don't own their stuff, so you can't upgrade and you can't repair their stuff. You can equip their weapons and whatnot, but if you unlock the blueprints, like, you saw how easy it was to craft things. It, like, takes five minutes of gathering to craft whatever you want so you're better off just grinding the blueprints for the builds that you want to play uh and then if you die you spend five minutes you craft another set and go back out like that's the game that's basically the game anyway i just want to thank you guys so much for watching please leave a like on this video if you have any questions even though i have a hundred thousand plus subscribers i have no life i read every single comment so if you ask me a question that was not already answered in the video i will answer it in the comments if i can um you know i'm still learning too <laughs> but other than that please 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 also click the video on the right side of your screen and if you don't click it then you're gonna you're gonna fast accidentally and then when it's your bedtime you're gonna be hungry but if you try to eat you'll get acid reflux and you won't be able to sleep and it's not gonna be good so click that video on the right side of your screen or that'll happen to you